Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this NGS Division D East cast brought to you by Off Brand Serial with your hosts, myself, Rakatan, and the one and only Mad Buddha. Hey, hey. We are on game two of Beast Coast versus Stitches Be Crazy. In the blue trunks, Cavill at rest on the Johanna Super Goat, playing the Leeming, Ceres on Deckard Kane, Lothrian playing Thrall and Mig on the Asmodan. And on the side of Stitches Be Crazy, in the red trunks, we have Maxilla on Maiev, Bellulos on Tyrael, GZB once again playing Yorel, Tekio on White Mane, and Cheese once again playing Phoenix. Oh man. Before we get into the cast, I just want to say we did mean Division B, not Division D. Sorry about that. But <laughs> oh, Division B? Yeah, B, B. <laughs> uh, I completely need to get some better stuff. My have. Oh man. My have uh, taken a little bit of damage there. Uh, my apologies. Division B East, not D. It is <laughs> sometimes hard to hear. All good. Well, with team comps like this, and after seeing game one, I uh, fully expect Cheese to just win the game. <laughs> Cheese, for those people who haven't seen game one yet, is one of the best carry players we've ever seen here in the off-brand serial casting studio. He is a heck of a player. <laughs> he single-handedly won most of the team fights for Stitches Be Crazy last game, so I'm really excited to see if he can pop off again here in game two. Yep, Cheese with the uh, combination of the double tank is prepped to be putting out a lot of damage here and making a good uh, second game out of this. Well, of the comps that we have picked here today, what do you think? Who has the upper hand, Rectan? Well, I think once again, uh, Beast Coast picking a kind of triple damage type uh, one with only one tank. I think their tank this time might be a little bit better, Johanna, uh, for that single tank roll. But Stitches be crazy once again, Urel Tyrael, a very, very aggressive dive comp, which is very good against a triple backline. And, well, Thrall isn't necessarily oh, a backline, but he... Wow, already getting that first Dragonite. Uh, <laughs> okay. like, I was, like I was saying, uh, Thrall, not exactly a backline character, but if you do CC him down, he will, he will go down pretty hard. So, I, I'm really favoring Stitches be crazy. I think that their Urel player, uh, GZB, is... A very aggressive and knows how to play that character and I have a lot of faith in that tank line to be able to get in the back disrupt and win the fight we also obviously got uh, Maiev gonna be helping out there and white main one of the most powerful healers in the game right now I really am favoring to be crazy in this in this game fair enough there's been quite a bit of action here early on they've already got a whole set of towers down on the side of Stitches Be Crazy here in bottom lane, the most important lane to push on Dragon Shark, as many of us know. We got a much easier win condition from the other two lanes, being very open and also having a significant number. Ooh, there you go, Cavalot Rest Dragon. getting pulled oh. by the Maiev, and it's gonna be first blood once again to Stitches Be Crazy. No, Johanna there wow. getting unfortunately tethered by Maiev, pulled out, and Deckard not able to save her. That wonderful casting feel when you're just trying to say words and they're like, oh, hold on, we gotta fight everyone. <laughs> no words Always. for you. Happens all the time. <laughs> wow, though, it just be crazy. It's coming out of the gate absolutely gunning for it. They're halfway through bottom for it in only a few minutes. They had a whole wall. They've already had a Dragon Knight. They haven't dropped any soak anywhere. They, it's, this is... I mean, last game we know that noted that they won through their early macro play, constantly giving them advantages around the map, but this is like the stuff of legends. I wonder if they're going to be able to keep up this kind of pressure as the game continues. Oh, I think so. It's a very, once again, a very aggressive team composition, and they've shown they know how to play it. Yeah, that's for sure. They definitely seem to favor the aggressive styles. But I'm, I'm wondering here if they're actually going to go with a judgment on the Tyrael, or if they're just looking to play Sank and kind of kite it out. As I mean, if they go for the aggressive play with the way they played last game, I feel like they'll be rewarded more uh, for their individual mechanics here. But that isn't to discount Beast Coast. I mean, just because they lost last game doesn't mean that they didn't have a good fighting chance. And I think that the draft they've come up with this time definitely plays to their more laid back kind of poke fight style. And I think that even though we were sitting here hyping up Stitches Be Crazy, 
I might actually believe in Beast Coast Draft a little more here, given the way they played last game. All right, all right. I like it. A little bit of skirmish down here in the bot lane. Oh, the unstoppable yes, coming out yeah. from Johanna. Man, would I love to see a judge material on, on this on this game? Yeah, no kidding. For those of us who don't watch off-brand cereal down in Division D, you'll. You won't know, but we love our judge material. <laughs> That's one of our favorite picks. So it's don't kind tell of a... that. <laughs> okay. It's a little if bit we, of if a... We get a respect. If we get a, a material respect, then that'll be a, a win in my book. <laughs> hey, everybody has those uh, guilty pleasures in life, and judge material is definitely our hero's guilty pleasure. This oh, is there crazy a fight looking for that second Dragon Knight, but Beast Coast pushing in on that bottom uh, shrine. Uh, Beast Coast not, not able, able to get anything. Uh, not able to get anything there. The uh, white main healing is just so effective at keeping your entire team up. It's really demoralizing <laughs> to uh, watch the white main just continuously heal. And it's like you're doing so much damage, but the enemy team is always at full health. It's just like, oh, gosh. I think perhaps the best play that either team could make right here would just be to get an early port so that it's easier for them to pressure for these dragon shrines. Because right now, if you, uh... Oh, are they gonna get another one, though, as I say that? They are. They are gonna get the one in middle. Urel manages top against Brawl. And the bottom two, Tyrael and White Mane, the Wombo, the, the dynamic duo, able to hold it against three members of Beast Coast. Picking up level 10, this Dragonite is gonna be pushing in, although pretty aggressively, doesn't have the rest of his team with him. Gonna be taking a lot of extra damage from this tower unnecessarily. Uh, and we've also got Phoenix and Tyrael pushing bottom with White Mane. So a bit of a split here from uh, Such Just Be Crazy. Yeah, uh, but they're starting to get back around to it now. I think they were just looking to pick up the extra towers in mid for a little more experience points before yeah, they move they also on do manage to side, get that so. well, which is uh, pretty huge when you uh, are contesting, contesting mid. Yeah. You, need, you want that well. They're definitely going to be able to pick up this fort, and unfortunately it is Sanctification Tyrael. As disheartening as that oh. makes me, it, it is the classic pick. Come on, Bellalos. <laughs> I wanted to see the judgment, but that you know, wrong. you do you. Now, with this very aggressive comp, I think judgment would have been great. You've got Urel and Tyrael both diving into the back line. Just a bunch of squishy heroes back there. It's not really mentioned my head Decker too. Kane. Yeah, my head obviously, obviously also jumping in. Ow! It would have been absolute chaos for uh, Beast Coast to have to deal with that. But, uh, yeah, Sanctification coming out on Tyrael. Just I a guess, safe pick. Yeah, a safe pick. Definitely looking to do more of the kiting. Uh, I guess Sanctification, if well-timed, would be a great counter to a big Asmodan uh, Q coming in with a Li Ming orb, which definitely is the way that they're looking to play over on the side of Beast Coast. And Beast Coast, now that they have tens, is wow. I like this. They're going for a huge area crowd control with AoE, so now because of the pickup with the Earthquake here on Thrall, they're going to be able to have a much better team fight in open spaces, despite having not as much directed damage, a lot of skill shots will make them easier to land, and they'll be able to treat everything like it's a choke, really. I think this is going to be a great All right, set here. East Coast looking for the wrap down here on bottom. Oh. You're well rotating bottom, but is it going to be fast enough? Maxilla going in, a huge ult from Phoenix, but Say there's the Sanctification. Huge amounts of damage broken there. Lothrian getting low in the back. Cheese playing aggressive like he does. Cavalot is getting very low. He is going to go down. Oh, wow. Cheese getting out there is, uh, I feel like, a missed opportunity on the side of Beast Coast. They had everyone there in a 5v4, and Cheese split himself way off from his team, but not being able to capitalize means that Stitches Be Crazy are going to be able to take a pretty big fight there, especially with Jurel rotating in late. But now they're going for an aggressive Knights. I wonder if we're going to see another fight. Knight. Here comes the Root, but it doesn't go down. Maev in the front. They're getting rooted, but she is able to walk away. The Contested is oh, almost the there. Man, they can't quite get it. Jurel ulting there to try and get there, but is she going to? Nope, she's going to be able to jump over the wall. Beast Coast is going to be able to take back their Bruiser camp, and no deaths on either side. Stitches wow. be crazy, going for the aggressive camp there, but is going to be able to get out, and looks like they might just want to take their own camp. That was a really important fight for Beast to take, and also to try and win. With the Sanctification being down, it's their best chance for killing, but Ming uh, continuing to channel his 
what is that? Asmodan's death ray there on Yorel when Yorel had her ult pop was a, a big mistake. He definitely missed out on yeah, a kill the there, and run. no resets for Li Ming means that I feel like they could have cleaned that in a big, maybe whole team wide sweep there. Yeah, all right, so five members of Beast Coast are top there. Look like they might be wanting to siege here. Only four members of Stitches be crazy top, but they do have that talent advantage, and they're under their own fort. They've also got the Knights pushing there. All members of Beast Coast rotating bottom, maybe looking for a pickup on this Maiev. Thrall being very aggressive here, but the rest of his team not following. The, all right, 1v1. I, I think I favor Thrall in that engagement. Yeah, I think I do as well, but it looks like maybe we're going to have another fight pop off here as GZB goes in. Yorel, once again, being very aggressive. GZB likes to get in the face of his opponents. Oh, uh, they're just going to they're just gonna let the, the camps push in, yeah. All right, Stitches be crazy. Yeah, playing, uh, playing back here. They do have the talent advantage, or they had the talent advantage, but no longer. So they decide to back up and play defensively. Beast Coast now all over the map. Johanna in mid looking to stop that turn in, but there's four members of Stitches be crazy there. I'm not sure if. All right, she held them off long enough for Asbadan to capture it top. Thrall down really there. Spread all over right now. Yeah, Thrall in a really bad position here, not oh, gonna be able to rotate. Top. Beast Coast needs to get the hell out of there, but Asbadan getting knocked back. The ult coming out from Phoenix, and that is going to finish off the Asbadan. I mean, it may have finished off Asmodan, there. but they still managed to hold both shrines for at least a little while here on the side of Beast Coast, and that pick isn't going to amount to much map pressure, I don't think so. Beast Coast is yep. doing a great job of kind of stemming the pressure coming here from the Stitches Be Crazy. I mean, if I'm Stitches Be Crazy right now, right there, I just, I'd take that fort. I think I would, easy, too. That's sure. a free fort. Yeah, it's definitely a missed opportunity for having uh, longer lanes in your favor. But it looks like we're gonna have another fight down bottom as Cheese goes in aggressively. Phoenix goes in really aggressively. Lothrian trying to lock him down, but not able to. There's the Earthquake oh, coming out. Oh, the Sanctification gets him out of there. He's in I oh. know he's not, but the damage on the is also mean. too much. Reset the damage mean. onto those frontline characters. Serial is gonna fall. The Yorel trying to stay alive, but look at five man of Beast Coast still alive. What a great fight there from Beast Coast, catching up in terms of levels. What can they do? Taking out three members of Stitches Be Crazy. Wow. Phoenix, they're getting caught out. And uh, wow. ooh, man, the sanctification almost saving him, but just the the uh, amount of damage putting out uh, put out by Beast Coast there, just I, too much. I'm so Stitches impressed. They they actually let Cheese play his aggressive play style and then just ate him alive for it. They said, we know you like to go in. We know you like to make big Phoenix plays. We know what you're about. Here. And it wasn't enough. That was a great counter on the side of Beast Coast. All right, and with that, they are back in this game on level. Both teams at 15. Of course, uh, Beast Coast is missing a couple of forts. That top fort still just on a sliver of health, but they are going to be able to get this Dragon Knight thanks to the uh, excellent team fight there in bot lane. Yeah, no kidding. Let's see though. what they do with it. The poke All really right. working out for them. I want to see if they can pull it off more than once, though. That is their biggest team fight win of the series so far, but as long as they play to this poke style, it definitely seems to fit their natural tendencies as players. And if it can work out for them more than once and they can tie this series, that'll be a big swing here for Beast Coast. I have getting the boot. Beast Coast going to be taking that bottom fort, even and up the fort count here. Oh, they're going to go for a keep? I think they should. They have the siege. They have the Dragon Knight. There's no reason to not go for it. You have a siege-based composition with Azadan. Oh, oh my yeah, god! Absolutely. Their poke is amazing. Look at that super go. Li Ming disintegrate onto a huge number of Stitches Be Crazy's team. Dragonite still up, doing a really good job of keeping it alive. That's what I like to see. And no kidding, but this poke from Asmodan. Oh, wow. wow, look at that Asmodan. Oh, they caught two bottom? And uh, Cheese jumps out. I think they should All stay right. here and try and siege this. I really don't yeah, think they this, should let this, this keep go. Yeah, this keep should go down. Oh, Lothrian earthquake. with the Earthquake. They get it. And there goes the first keep of the game to Beast Coast. What a comeback here oh by gosh. the blue team. That, wow, that's, 
that is unbelievable to turn it on a dime uh, from one team fight to a keep that that's just not play you get to see very often especially against a team the caliber of stitches be crazy beast coast is just looking so impressive uh, you gotta say that mig there has been, <laughs> been doing the lord's work on asmodan or i guess the demon king's work because it'd be kind of weird if asmodan was doing the lord's work but <laughs> He has put out some outrageous damage with those big globes and the siege oh, yeah. potential. Oh yeah, definitely doing his part for this poke team. Thrall, I think, really oh, doing yeah. a great job of getting in there. That earthquakes, those earthquakes have been excellent. Yeah, Lothrian been is pulling getting the in. trigger. He's been locking down those enemy carries, stopping that aggressive fight, and giving his team the room they need to put out the damage to win these team fights. Yeah, Lothrian is also stepping up big. I, I gotta say, it's like a full 180 from last game. Stitches be crazy in team fights. Looked absolutely undefeatable. But here we come into game two, and I, I really do feel as if these, these new picks that are playing to the strengths of each player, like Super Go here on the Li Ming and Ming on the Asmodan with the big poke base play is allowing them a much a much better fighting chance, a much better stance in these team fights. So they're really, really taking it to the house. And with that keep down already, you got to expect that they will be able to clean up this game with one or two more big fights. Oh, yeah. This, uh, it, it's really, Dragonshire is, is a map where it is difficult. It's a difficult map for rotations. Um, it's not a big map. There's not a lot of space between the lanes. Ganking is really easy. Moving between lanes, it's really hard to get good pressure in a lane. But as soon as you have that keep down, then... Oh. Uh, look at, look <laughs> they both get a bush cheese each other? Cheese. <laughs> uh, I guess not. But, Stitch oh. be crazy breaks first. Oh, here goes oh, Cavalier. Cavalier at rest. Now going in for it. The slow and root onto Tyrael. Nah, I don't know. Crazy says, nah, nah, nah. We're not, we're not going in. <laughs> All right, we've been bush cheese once or twice before. <laughs> now it's should be crazy. Maybe a little gun shy now. They've lost a couple of fights, and their really aggressive comp now is just sitting back and eating that damage. Oh, are they just gonna walk through? They think oh, they're here we go. Still, Maev trying to get in the back uses her passive. Look at the damage from Phoenix oh, coming out, but he is gonna go down. Look at the. Oh my goodness, Phoenix is completely evaporated. White man, I'm able to keep with that. Keep up with that damage, Urel. Everyone else gets out, but Phoenix going in really hard there and uh, absolutely getting massacred in the back. He does get a good ult off, but just two, oh, cat is on not core enough. Too. They've got three cat is on core. That's going to force their hand. Somebody has to rotate back. This should be a free, easy pick up here for the Dragon Knight for Beast Coast. They're this continuing the to just danger. pour the pressure on. This is the danger of Dragonshire. It is so easy to lose map pressure, and once you lose map pressure, it is so easy for the other team to get the Dragon Knight, and then it just snowballs oh, out Oh, Bellados. Looking Sank. like it's really bad. They have to use the Sanctification oh. there to save himself. Look at the damage on the Maxilla. He's just out of that fight. No, no, still trying to stop it. his best to stop them from getting the Dragon Knight, but instead he's gonna give up his life, and they are gonna get the Dragon Knight anyway. Beast Coast Oh, they're looking. going for the win to possibly win the game right here. Tyrael is down. It is a 4v5 with the Dragonite. They are up 20. They can end this game and bring the series to a tie, one to one. Well, let's see if they can do it. I mean, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Cheese has made big plays before and they still have more than enough players alive to keep them off the court if they play it right. Phoenix getting kicked out there. Maxilla oh, going in for the big pull, but isn't gonna get any follow-up damage. Tekio oh. trying desperately to keep his team alive. Look at the Phoenix Jeez. ult. It's not going to be doing enough. Tech, or Mayav does go down. Jeez, taking a lot of damage there off the side. He's doing his best to stop this enemy team, but there's just too much health. 42% the Dragon Knight is wailing on the score, 20%. And that is going to be GG. Beast Coast takes game two.